morning guys, Ariel over here at Fine If. Today I am making apple cider vinegar. This is something a lot of you folks have asked me about and it is something I do pretty regularly. So I'm going to try to make a video. Now you can do this with apple scraps and that's what I most often do like cores, peels, uh, all that kind of thing. I, if you're making pie or apple crisp or anything else, you know, even just eating apples, whatever, if you're going to core them and peel them and have some scraps, you can do this. Now I don't have any um, scraps at the moment because I am not making anything else with apples right now. But what I do have is some, um, again, I shop the, uh, the discount produce Aww. section. Again, I shop the discount produce section and what I've got is some kind of bruised apples that were um, on the sale pile. So they're, these would be fine for eating, but they've kind of got some, some mushy spots and stuff in the side and there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm actually going to use whole apples, but there's no reason you need to do this uh, with a, you know, a whole apple. You can definitely, and I have lots of times done it with just cores and peels and that kind of thing. So what we're going to do first, basically, is make a hard cider, um, because apple cider vinegar is uh, apple cider that is fermented even further until it turns into vinegar. Now the reason I make my own is because I use a lot of this stuff. Um, use it in all kinds of different recipes and stuff. I drink a shot um, most mornings. I'll have it in my water. I know some people use it um, in their pet's water as well uh, for their dogs or cats or their livestock because it helps with digestion because of the bacteria, which I'll be showing you in a minute, that are in here um, similar to yogurt and things like that. This is going to ferment and it's going to have a bacteria colony and a lot of the bacteria in here is really beneficial for your um, guts and helping with digestion. And it you know, if you like vinegar at all, it also tastes good and has more flavor than um, like a white filtered vinegar. So I, I like using real raw live vinegars and one of the better or more popular brands that you can find everywhere. You can see the floaties in the bottom there. That's the mother. Um, if you shake it up, it's going to get all cloudy is um, Bragg's. It's available in most grocery stores. I think it's in all my local grocery stores. But here anyway, it is crazy expensive. It's usually like six or seven bucks for a bottle. Now, if you don't have any other um, option, I still think that's worth it because it's such a uh, beneficial food um, thing to have around. But I'm going to make way more than that jar and for a dollar because when my grocery stores got um, discount produce, they, they bag them up in varying sizes of bags depending on what the thing is. and uh, put them in a pile where every bag is a dollar. So I got all these apples for one dollar and the only other ingredients in here are water which I get for free and a tiny bit of this and honey. So for a few um, pennies over a dollar we're going to make a very big batch of apple cider vinegar. Now this is kind of fun to do because it's a, a fermenting project. It'd be fun to do with kids and stuff as well and or for adults um, who like uh, watching or learning about uh, bacteria colonies and it's definitely less expensive uh, which is which is certainly one of the main motivators to do this. So what I'm doing here is just I'm cutting all three of my apples up pretty thin slices so that they water can get all around them similar to if I had um, you know been using cores or peels and the seeds and everything are fine in there. So I've got a bunch of apple bits in here now again they could be from anything and right now they're kind of white and fresh. We're going to let these sit for the rest of the day I'll see what I get busy with uh, maybe till tomorrow till they get kind of brown um, and maybe starting to draw just a little juice. So I'm just going to let that sit there uh, pretty much totally in the open air. I'm going to use one of my pieces of uh, flower cloth there to cover it just to keep dust out but, but with no kind of seal. So I'm going to let them get nice and brown. Now once they are brown what I'm going to do is add uh, water enough to cover them up 
and then add, I, I think that's going to be about a half gallon if I, you know, level that out. This is a gallon jar. I'm gonna, so I fill it up, I'm going to have about a half a gallon of water. I'm going to add two tablespoons of a already fermented vinegar with the mother. If you use a, a filtered vinegar that's got none of the little cruddies floating in it, this won't work because you don't have any of the bacteria needed to make the fermentation. But I'm going to use this remaining bottle of commercial vinegar I have. I also have some up here that I've already made on my own, and I don't know if you can see, I've actually got some scobies in there, kind of little circle-ish bacterial mats that have grown, and I've got at least two separate layers in there. I'm going to pull one of them out and toss it in with this a little later on too to, to add some more bacteria to speed up the fermentation, but I got this jar from doing this process with these two things, so I'm just showing you that. Um, so once these are out, I'm going to cover it with water. Make sure you don't use um, a water with, you need, I've got well water, so I'm good. But if you don't have well water, make sure you've got a uh, filtered water or something without chlorine in it. Because if you've got chlorinated water, that's going to kill this bacteria. And that also is going to probably make your vinegar fail to ferment. So I'm going to cover it with water. Add two tablespoons of a existing um, raw vinegar and two tablespoons of honey to give it a little sugar to for the bacteria to eat and really uh, get going and multiplying on. And I'll check back in with you then. But for now, the apples are just going to be sitting there getting brown. So the next morning, all my apples have turned brown. Some varieties turn browner than others, and I filled the uh, jar up at just about halfway with water. Now I'm going to put I'm put in two tablespoons of an existing unfiltered raw apple cider vinegar. It should have the cloudy mother in there. And I'm not going to measure this exactly, so... I'm going to say that's two tablespoons. We've got to give those bacteria a little bit of a sugary boost to get them going. So I'm going to use about two tablespoons of honey. Any raw local honey is fine for this. I suppose it doesn't even have to be local, but um, it's generally better for you in your area. Since it's as little crystallized, I'm going to give it just a minute to sit in there and dissolve. We've got honey in there. I'm going to stir this all up really good. If you've got a smaller jar, if you're doing like just a quart at a time, which I've done, you can easily shake it. And I'm going to just cover this. I've got a little piece of flour sackcloth. You could use whatever. I like using a rubber band. And there we go. At this point, what we're basically making is hard cider at the moment. And so... I'm going to just um, stir or shake this up about once a day for the next two weeks. If it gets any little foam on top, you can just skim it off. And a little bit of white mold on top, you can skim that off. It's no problem. And I'm going to just keep it sitting back here behind my sink. I'm going to slide it clear back in the back there. It's kind of a nice dark corner to store fermenting things like this. Check back in on that later, and I will show you the batch I did earlier. You can kind of see the, the f feathery uh, mother on the bottom and the round kind of scoby. Uh, it's actually a bacterial mat. See there, I shook it all up and I got all cloudy. Um, bacterial mat of the vinegar culture that's growing on there. So that's what the more finished product looks like. Okay guys, this is a little more than two weeks later because I got busy and just didn't get around to it. But I'm going to finish up this apple cider vinegar project. At this point in our big jar here, we've got hard cider. You can see how the apples have all kind of sunk to the bottom. Take a whiff of that. It uh, smells definitely a little bit alcoholic. And I'm going to strain out the apple chunks that are still in there, your cores, your peels, your whole apples, whatever you chose to use. I guess I'm not using the strainer that size. Try this big spoon. I'm just going to lift all of my chunks out here. 
These are going to go in the compost, or if you've got uh, chickens or something like that, you could certainly feed your chickens. They might get just a little tipsy. But I'm just going to make sure I get most of the big chunks out of here and any cores and seeds and that kind of thing. I know I said earlier not to use a uh, metal spoon. What I meant is don't put it in metal because the I don't think it hurts anything to touch it briefly with a, a metal spoon, but if you are leaving this sit in a, a metal container, the acid from the vinegar will start to leach some stuff out of the metal as it sits. So I'm just going to get the big chunks out there, and I'm then going to use my strainer and just pour this into a smaller jar to be handier as it finishes fermenting and keeps. So I'm going into a regular quart jar. Just going to use that funnel to catch any more big-ish chunks that I miss, kind of like that. That makes it full enough to dump over here into my bowl. This, it does smell a little bit vinegar, a, uh, vinegary, and a little bit alcoholish at this point in time. But at the moment, we've basically made hard cider. Now, I use honey for this. Um, you can use just plain white sugar or raw sugar. I've read quite a few people that say that it does ferment a little bit faster if you use sugar. The bacteria is pretty much going to eat all the sugar either way, so you're not going to be eating the sugar. Um, but I, I'm never usually in a giant hurry, so I don't mind if it takes a little longer and I use honey. But if it's going a little slow for you and you want to speed it up, maybe try using real sugar. Put the rest of this over in my already mostly or already uh, done vinegar. And I don't mind if a tiny bit of pulp gets in there. Um, I just don't want the big chunks and the apple seeds and such. So, there's that out of the way. Now I did just watch, wash my hands if you're gonna um, touch your vinegar do this. And so this jar is the one that I already had going with some vinegar and I didn't have much left so instead of starting a new jar I decided to just reuse this one. But I've got a couple little um, scoby layers that have developed in there in this one because it's been around for a few months. And just to make this one speed up you don't have to do this. If you're starting out with a brand new batch just put it in like this, um, cover it, let it ferment for another two to four weeks kind of depends on the temperature of your house and such um, how fast the bacteria is going to go you can taste it see when it's strong enough for you if it gets a little too strong you can simply add some water water it back down to the vinegar level you like if you buy vinegar in a grocery store it's usually adjusted with water to be um, right at a, a level five percent acidity so you can kind of just adjust adjust it to your taste but i'm going to reach in here carefully show you what one of these SCOBY mats looks like. These you don't want to touch with metal, for real. Um, that is a, if you can see it there, it's jar shaped because that's where it's been growing. That is a vinegar SCOBY. And here's actually one other little thin layer that kind of got bunched up. And there's still another layer down under there. It's disturbed and floating underneath um, because I just poured more liquid in there. Now this one got all curled up there. He'll flatten out over time, but that's just putting some extra stronger vinegar culture back into here so that both jars can continue to ferment more rapidly. Now, um, I call that a SCOBY still, which is a stands for symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. Um, if you're familiar with brewing kombucha, it's not a kombucha scoby. You can't put a kombucha scoby in vinegar or vice versa and get vinegar or kombucha. They're two different colonies of bacteria. Um, just like you couldn't take the bacteria that makes a blue cheese and put it in milk and get yogurt. Um, they are both fermented milk products with different kinds of bacteria in it, but um, apple cider vinegar bacteria and kombucha bacteria are slightly different cultures. So now I'm just going to cover these up again. Um, I've got some of these little 
lids like this and I'm not going I'm just going to give them like half a turn I'm not going to seal them tight because I don't want um I want the bubbles to be able to escape but there's not a lot of bubbling going on but that keeps anything from getting in there and like I said these are going to go away and sit for another two to four weeks or longer until I've got more apple cider vinegar so there we go got a little over a quart and a half of vinegar. You can see the, the lines of the scoby edges in between there, or inside there, as it floats around. Probably a new layer will start to form on the top in a couple of days. But like I said, if you don't have a um, vinegar scoby already going, you will eventually get one if you keep doing this long enough. That's how I got mine. I didn't start with one. All I started with was those couple tablespoons of Bragg's apple cider vinegar to get my culture going. And it's not a bad idea to take a little piece of duct tape and stick a date on the side of your jar if you are like me and maybe look at it after a few weeks and think, I don't know if it's been one week or three weeks yet. But anyway, um, it definitely takes some time because of all the waiting time in between to make the vinegar, but it only takes a couple minutes to mix up, a few times to stir and check on, just, you know, a couple minutes to drain, and I've probably got, at least in my local grocery store prices, uh, $16, $17 worth of vinegar that's going to be ready there in a little bit, and it costs me just a few pennies over $1. So that's why I make my own apple cider vinegar at home and hopefully maybe you guys give that a try. Oh, and I've always read in instructions that for these next few weeks, two to four or whatever you're going with, uh, while it ferments, you're supposed to shake it up every few days. Uh, that might help speed up mixing the bacteria around and helping it ferment. I have a tendency to forget it and uh, it's going to ferment away anyway. So feel free to shake it up every few days if you think about it, but if you forget about it, I wouldn't worry. It doesn't seem to kill the bugs in there at all. Thanks for watching, folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.